Hi guys, I'm live. Hey Rhonda. Live from Baltimore tonight from this business office. Hi Kristen. Hi Tracy and Eileen. Hi Bryce and Cecily. Janice. Oh, I'm getting, I love my followers. I really do. Well, I'm live from the business office in Baltimore. As promised, I'm here. Hey Jane. Uh, we sure love being in Dillsburg. Um, we're still on vacation, but we head home tomorrow. And hey, thanks for inviting followers. Cecily, that's awesome. If y'all want to invite followers, swipe up if you're on an iPhone and um, to the side if you're not on an Android and you guys can invite followers. Hey, Cody, good to see you too. Thank y'all um, for joining my Periscope tonight. I'm Trina Titus Lozano and I'm a counselor and uh, an ordained Christian minister. And I'm starting a new series tonight. I have just finished. Yeah, hooray for Dillsburg. <laughs> but now we're in Baltimore, so um, but it was great. But anyway, I just finished a series, The ABCs of Parenting, The Absolute Basic Criteria for Raising the Next Generation. And y'all can check that out on my website, TrinaTitusLozano.com. Um, they're not all uploaded yet, but we're getting there. So at least catch up and watch the replay if you need to. Okay. And yesterday we were praying like we always do on Sundays. And um, today I'm starting a new series. So it's going to be a quick, short series before I start the next one after that. Because I'm coming into being with y'all every day at noon and nine. Central Standard Time so we can just sort of do life together and hang out. I would love if y'all could come in my office and if we could be besties and all that. But since that's not possible, at the very least, we have Periscope. And so I'm loving the Periscope. So y'all give me the thumbs up if you're really loving this, okay? And keep sending me the hearts because that's awesome too. Um, but anyway, I'm sending you guys the love right back at you from Baltimore, from the business office here. <laughs> but I'm having a good time with God. I'm an ordained Christian minister and I love my, my Bible time. So guess what the ABCs are being followed by? The one, two, threes, okay? So today is the one, two, three, the first, second, and third. That's right. We're just going to do the whole three, the, the top three, the first three of the Ten Commandments, okay? Thanks for the thumbs up. Hey, oily mom. Um, so anyway, let's get started, okay? And hopefully as you guys apply this to your life, you can teach this to your, to your children, and it can just go on from generation to generation to generation because that's the whole point, okay? Um, we're just going to keep on working um, until we can impact generations up to a thousand generations, okay? So pull out your Bible if you want, and um, we're going to Exodus 20. So um, I will let you guys just uh, pull out your Bible or we lost connection. Oh, sorry. That's the way Periscope does sometimes. Sometimes it freezes, it loses connection. But anyway, stick with it because I'm here. I'm sticking with it. I'm coming to y'all. And um, I don't know what the deal is with the bad connection, but oh, well, I'm going to do my part and hopefully it'll all work out. Um, I am on Wi-Fi at this hotel, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, Let's just turn to Exodus. Okay. And I'm in chapter 20 and we are going to just read through the first three of the Ten Commandments. Hey, greetings from Poland. Hey, good to see you guys from Poland. Wow. Well, I'm a Texan, um, but I'm visiting Baltimore, Maryland tonight. So this is where I'm periscoping from. Okay. First commandment, number one. Oh, you're going to get your Bible? Awesome. Awesome. I'm opening Exodus. It's, it's We could look at the Ten Commandments in Exodus or Deuteronomy, a few different places. Um, but I'm just going to go from Exodus 20, okay? Exodus 20, um, I'll start with verse 1, okay? Then God give the people all of these instructions. Okay, this is the Ten Commandments, okay? All of these instructions. I'm the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. Okay, so, so this is... This is God, okay? This is Yahweh. This is Jehovah, the God of Israel, okay? Um, all right, all right, Raven Parker, I'm going to slow down just a little bit, uh, which is hard for me because I'm a fast talker, so y'all just stick with me, okay? Exodus, it's right after the beginning, okay? So Genesis, Exodus is just the second book of the Bible. Um, sorry about your bad reception, but okay, you must have no other God before me. Now, in the world that we live in today, you know, especially in America, we are a Christian nation. We were founded to be a Christian nation, and we still are to a certain extent. It hasn't been real common for us to understand the concept of other gods and of idolatry. But let's just think about when the Bible was written and what God was really telling the people of Israel. And he was he was being very specific, saying there are no other gods before. 
before me. Well, how do we apply this to our life? Well, think about it. Let's think about the Egyptians at the time, and let's also think about the Greek gods. And just as we look back historically, we can really relate to some of the issues that they were dealing with at this at the same time. Okay. Um, and we are specifically talking about biblical things. So if that's not something that y'all are interested in, you know, you're, that's just, that's just the, just might as well follow another periscope or because I'm always going to be talking about biblically based, uh, things and going to give you wisdom from the Bible. So today we're talking about the one, two, threes. Okay. The first, second, and third of the 10 commandments. Okay. So when we think about this, a few of the gods that really sort of, um, it made me think a couple of, of a couple of things. Um, oh my goodness. I'm just going to have to keep blocking these, um, blocking the trolls, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that because I want to be here for all y'all. Um, and I want this to be an outreach for other people as well. So that's why it's not a closed periscope, but, um, I'm just, I'm not going to, not going to, um, tolerate inappropriate comments. So I got to block the user. So excuse me for the, um, the, the interruptions, but that's okay. We'll take care of business. Okay. Something interesting I was thinking about. You know how we celebrate Easter and really it's Resurrection Day? And my dad always taught us to call it Resurrection Day because we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as we are celebrating that, the pagan celebration, the pagan goddess, her name is Ishtar. So the goddess of Ishtar is the goddess of fertility. Now just think about as women, and you men would know if you're dealing with this in your life as well, because men also deal with infertility, women deal with infertility, married couples deal with infertility, and dealing with infertility is such a heartbreaking thing because we know that ultimately God created us to be fertile. Okay, he created with men with seeds and he created women to be fertile and we're supposed to be able to fertilize the seeds that are implanted in us to bear fruit and to be fruitful and multiply so when we're not being fertile that's going to be frustrating okay and there's even scriptures about that in the bible and we can see sarah as an illustration of that and she was very frustrated about not being fertile but Think about if we, when we are struggling with if, with fertility, if we are not trusting God, our creator, the way that we should, if we had an opportunity to just worship a goddess of fertility, would we do it? Because he says, there is no other God beside me. Okay, there's no other God before me. There's no other God beside me. So we need to trust God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We are trusting that He knows what is best, okay, and that He has our best interest in mind, and that He created us for a purpose. He knows our life. He knows our life plan, and He gave us life, and He is also in charge of our fertility. So we've got to trust and pass this. So if we had an opportunity to worship, say, for instance, the God of fertility, Ishtar, would we do that? Would we put that beside our God? We can't do that. We have to say, no, God, we will trust you. Both of my daughters have struggled with some infertility. My oldest daughter, Brooke, she, she went a couple of years before she was pregnant with her first child, and she had had some thyroid problems, and so they had told her, well, you're not going to be able to be very fertile as a result of the thyroid problems. You know what? We just prayed, and we just trusted God above, above what the doctors were telling us, and just said, Lord, you know her family, you know the plans that you have for her, and you know when she should be fertile. So you know what? Trust God. And of course, we can do our part, and there's certain things that we can do to, to help with the fertility, okay? There's treatments, and there's medicine, and, and modern miracles, really, that, that have been discovered to help with our fertility. But we don't want to worship fertility, okay? We can't worship fertility. We have to trust God that he will perform a miracle in our life lives to bring forth life, okay? So in prayer and in understanding that he will He will anoint the seed that is planted. He will give us a seed that is fertile and he will bring forth life in us and then he gets all the glory and all the credit for the creator that he is for the creation that he makes, not the goddess of fertility, okay? So that's kind of the difference and we could even imagine that we don't ever want to put anything above trusting God, okay? So just thinking about that, that's right. Right, Gianna is a miracle, not because we worship the Ishtar, the goddess of fertility, but because we worship the, the Creator and we trusted the Creator to um, to to bless and anoint your body and your life and to bring healing and to bring fertility in your life. And of course, now you're expecting another baby, which is a complete miracle as well. Okay, think about um, well, think about Hera. 
the goddess of marriage and family. Okay. You know, when, when I was faced with divorce in my own life, I've been married for, um, uh, 32 years. So I, I'm, I was, praise God, there was a miracle in my marriage. Okay. And God did a miracle and it was his blessing and his anointing. And I trusted him to restore my marriage and to, and to, and to rescue us out of, um, divorce, which could have happened. However, I found out at that time of my life, when I felt like the rug got pulled out from underneath me, I was really, really putting marriage and family right beside my relationship with God. And he says, no other gods before me or beside me. That's what the literal trans translation is, is no other gods before me or beside me. So even our marriage, as sacred as it is and as holy as it is, it cannot be before our relationship before God. It cannot be. And our, and our relationship with our children cannot come before our relationship with God. So our priority must be our relationship with God first, okay? So no other gods before him. We can't even worship the god Hera, which would be the god of marriage and family. No, we don't worship marriage and family. We appreciate it, but we appreciate that it's a miracle. We appreciate that it's a blessing. We appreciate that when we do things God's way and put him first, that he will bless our marriage and family, okay? So it's all about Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus, our Savior. It's all about that. It's not about any other thing. And so no God comes before him or beside him. So that is commandment number one. Well, we can even think about um, pride. Pride makes a God of ourselves. And that's what happened with Satan is Satan wanted to worship himself. He put himself before God. He put himself before his creator. He wanted to think, oh, look how beautiful I am. He wanted to be famous and he wanted to be more beautiful and more worshiped. And you know, when, when there's pride and that's what made Satan, Satan was pride really. So when there's pride, that's really us worshiping ourselves. That's putting ourselves up beside Side God, because when we're worshiping our success, our beauty, and um, and, well, actually anything that brings us delight and that we are dependent on, that is putting things beside God, and that's not okay. That is pride, and that's evil. It's evil, and it's and it's going directly against and rebellion against the first commandment, which is to put no other god before Him. Um, another god that that. Um, you know, sort of rang true to me like, oh, I don't want to make sure that I don't put that God up there. And that is Aphrodite. Aphrodite, we can just imagine. Remember that? That sounds familiar to some of you, I'm sure. That's a goddess of love and beauty. So how many times can we see that even in our own lives, we'll put beauty up there, up there right along with the priority. So people will prioritize their own beauty or their outward appearance. They will prioritize the love in their life, okay? So we want love. Love. God is love. That is his name. His name is love. But we have to worship him as being the author and the founder and the creator of love. So it doesn't come from us. It comes from God. Okay. It doesn't come from our own beauty or our own ability to love. It all comes through Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus. Okay. So that I hope covers number one. Oh, thanks for the hearts, y'all. I hope that that kind of made a little bit more sense to you. So you don't rush past that first commandment. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my my Bible here. See, got it right here. My little handy travel Bible since I'm on the road right now. But thanks y'all for coming with me on the road. Um, so number two, you must not make for yourself an idol or any other image. You know, it's so interesting because in America today, I can go to any store, any department store, any decorating store, and I see actual idols. I see Buddhas. I see um, all sorts of different idols. And it's like, it's just weird. It's like it's decorating um, and, and it's decorative and it's, you know, and I'm just like, no, like that's not okay. I'm not going to decorate with a Buddha, you know, and, and I don't even go to spas that have Buddhas and idols all around. It just gives me the creeps. Like it's not okay. So um, we have a really nice spa in the Dallas area, but it's, it's all, it's got idols everywhere and it bothers me. Why does it bother me? Well, because of, of the second commandment. But I love what it says after this. Okay, it does. It wigs me out, Cecily. It's true. I'm just like, no, I don't like that. Um, number two, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or image of anything in the heavens or on earth or the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection of any other gods. I lay my sins of the parents upon their children. This is very fascinating, okay? The entire family is affected. 
even children in the third and fourth generation to those who reject me. So when parents reject God or if you or people that you know are rejecting God, you have to know that when they're rejecting God, that affects generations. So when people live in rebellion and when people are literally dishonoring and rejecting God, it's affecting their children and their grandchildren and their great grandchildren. And, and you have to seriously consider the next part of this verse, which is so profound and absolutely wonderful. I lavish this is God, the God of Israel, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus, our Savior, our God. As Christians, this is our God saying this to us. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commandments. So when we love him and we obey his commandments, this is amazing because this affects our lives. We we live a blessed life and we get to have the opportunity of a life full of faith, walking in miracles. We walked in miracles today. My granddaughter was choking and I mean, she just had a miracle that she was able to cough that up. She had a grape stuck in her throat. And you know what? We walk in miracles. My son, right before I started periscoping tonight, he said that God blessed him with the refrigerator. The refrigerator had gone out and they needed a refrigerator today and one was given to them. You know, it is a blessed, awesome life to just walk in miracles, to trust God for everything in our lives. He says, I delivered you. He just like he did with the Israelites. I delivered me. I can be trusted. Trust me. I will lavish my love on you when you're obedient to me. I am so blessed because I don't know how many generations above me have loved and served God. Maybe at least a thousand generations and I could count on that. But I know at least 10 generations because my grandma has done an awesome job and my great grandma did an awesome job keeping track at least 10 generations of people who have loved and served God and obeyed his commandments and have obeyed his commandments even to be ministers of the gospel and to go forth and tell others about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm carrying on that legacy and my children and my grandchildren will as well. Isn't that awesome? So for a thousand generations of those who love and keep his commands. So why do I want to keep God's commands of these 10 commandments? Well, because it blesses my life and it will for my children in a thousand generations. That's so exciting to me. So I hope that's exciting to y'all too. I just want to continue to encourage you this way. Okay. And then 10 commandment number three. Okay, one, two, and three. Number three, you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Okay, so that simply means don't take the Lord's name in vain. So don't be saying, oh my God, oh my God, can you believe that? Jesus Christ, that is ridiculous. Okay, I'm just role playing so that you guys know. But those little, those little mannerisms and those, that is what taking the Lord's name in vain is. It's being careless with his name. It's saying things as if it didn't matter. Okay, his name matters. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name matters. We cannot be flippant about saying the name of God. Okay, we can't be. So don't do that. Okay. Don't do it. Your children will pick it up. Okay, if you're convicted of that, awesome. I love that. Then if you're convicted of that, just repent and just let Jesus lavish his love upon you and take his name and, and make it special in your life that you can thank Jesus and you can love him and you can rejoice over what he does. And you know what? You just, just replace those words by using self-control. And if it comes out of your mouth, just capture those words and say, oh, oh, Lord God, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn that expression that it was a slang and I'm going to turn it into a prayer. God, deliver me from that. Deliver me from that. I have a heart to be obedient and just, and just to be delivered from accidentally saying his name in vain. If it's been a bad habit that was been carried down from generation to generation, you can change that. You don't have to be a victim of those bad habits that have been passed down to you or that you have started even before you knew Jesus as your personal savior. But ask him to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help reveal to you how and when you can capture those thoughts so that you can retrain your mouth and retrain, retrain your vocabulary to never take the Lord's name into vain, but to appreciate God, love God, to pray without ceasing, and to admire his name as holy because it is holy, okay? So that is the one, two, threes. Now we have completed the ABCs, and you can go to my website, trinatituslozano.com, and we'll get them all up there, okay, in the next few days. And um, so just watch from A to Z. 
need the absolute basic criteria for raising the next generation. Okay, and then now we're starting on the one, two, threes. So thank y'all for being with me tonight. I'm Trina Titus Lozano, and I'm periscoping with you every day at noon and nine, and I'm a counselor, and I hope that I am helping y'all and encouraging you, and that I get to see you every day. God bless y'all, and thank you so much. Yes, yeah, sweet dreams. Good night. Bye.